Welcome back to Have a Sin Boyfriend. This is Saida. And I'm Chancellor. Welcome back, guys. Evening. We got another video for you. We have today about how to enhance fragrance with hygiene. Very, very important, guys. If you want to smell fresh and clean for your significant other or just anybody that you're interested in. Yeah, definitely. Um, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> So this is an important topic because I've experienced in my life um, that people um, that I worked with, um, people that, I, that have been around me for a period of time, they tend to try to ask me questions about hygiene. I guess they've noticed something about me. Um, I always smell a certain way. I always look a certain way. So they kind of ask me. I have both male and female ask me questions. So I think it's good to kind of address this in our fragrance videos because um, hygiene is a very big part of fragrance. You're not Absolutely. using fragrance to cover you know natural body odors you may have um, and if there's a, a odor that you have that's a, a, that's a problem it may be something that you need to have looked at by a doctor or but we're not gonna get into that we're just gonna start with we're all human we all sweat <laughs> and, and we have naturally have odors so we'll go ahead and give you some tips on how to stay fresh so the first tip today is uh, shower every day a shower at least once a day now for me I say preferably in the morning time yeah, I would say so too. Um, um, and why is that, Sida? Why should we all shower in the morning? I believe you should shower in the morning because, well, so, so I say preferably in the morning. So sometimes we may take a shower after we come from work or we come from, from being out during the day and we just want to fresh ourselves before we get in the bed, which is great. I'm suggesting that you also shower in the morning if you showered at night because if you think about it, You've been asleep for eight hours. Yeah. During this time, you're tossing, you're turning, your body's doing certain processes while you're sleeping, so you may have been sweating. And then, you know, when you wake up, you may feel still pretty fresh, you know, but at the same time, you may, when you have sweat and the sweat has dried, you're, there's like germs and bacteria on your skin that are eating that sweat, and you may not notice an odor initially upon waking or even dressing. But maybe towards the beginning of the morning part of the day, let's say I, I moved here from New York and I would say as a New Yorker, everything's really rapid, you're walking and moving a lot, so you start sweating pretty early in the morning. Yeah. Think about it, if you've been sleeping and then that sweat that you were sleeping with uh, dried and then it gets wet again, guess what? Bacteria has plenty of stuff to eat. <laughs> so when bacteria has plenty of stuff to eat, when you start sweating anew in the morning, once you left your home, guess what? You can create an odor. So I think it's best to also shower in the morning. And not to mention, it just gets uh, stuck and trapped in different curves and crevices that you know we, we kind of overlook at times. Right. We have folds in our skin, um, and we have parts of our skins that sometimes rub together and creates heat. So that naturally moist heat, uh, damp. The bacteria loves that kind of environment so it's best to kind of decrease it by just kind of keeping the surface of our skin clean and, and having a shower in the morning and a big part of having a shower in the morning is also exfoliating um now so it doesn't have to be anything harsh you can use a washcloth you can use uh, a body scrub once a week or some kind of uh abrasive loofah once a week but i would say on a daily basis to use a washcloth because it kind of helps to clean the surface of your skin a little better, um, especially if you have old deodorant or any kind of waxy materials on your skin, like from lotions or, or, or body butters. I think that would be the best way to remove that and kind of just create a fresh start so that you don't have, like I said, the bacteria on your skin just eating um, residues on your skin, sweat on your skin. That's what creates the odor. So um, I would say it's best to exfoliate and moisturize after you cleanse, and I think you're all set to go. now. After you do that too, it's best if you if you if you choose to to wear deodorant. Now you don't have to wear an antiperspirant per se, but I would say it's best to wear some kind of deodorant. I really enjoy Lumi. Um, this is not a, a sponsorship, but this is not an advertisement. I actually genuinely enjoy Lumi, and what I like about it is that it's natural. It doesn't have an antiperspirant. You still can sweat, but it kind of. Uh, prevents that bacteria in your skin from just like growing and creating odor and you can use it on other parts other than your underarms you can use it yeah. um, in your private areas you can use it in, the, in the folds of your legs you know just being real you may have noticed sometimes that you may get a, um, a funny smell down there um, in the sense of it may not be an odor coming directly from a private part it may be just from folds of skin it kind of may smell like a, a little musty like kind of how on your knees something like that that I believe comes from the folds of your legs. Now, everyone, don't quote me on this. I, I'm not a doctor, but this is just suggestions um, from things I've noticed. So, you know, our thighs have a little fold right where your torso and your thighs meet your body. So, right there in the, the little folds, 
you know, that part gets sweaty, guess what? You'll get an odor down there. If you put a little of that natural deodorant there, it decreases that odor and you have a more pleasant smell. I think that's really important because basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to decrease our natural odors that can become a little funky so that you can smell your actual perfume. You know, you want to yeah. kind of let that perfume dominate and you want your natural with scent to blend with the fragrance versus having opposing fragrances mixing with that. That can create headaches, you can get a little nauseous, you can, um, it, it can just not be so pleasant. So the best thing to do is to try to minimize unpleasant odors on our bodies and kind of set your natural essence flow through so that it can match the fragrances you wear. I think that's the best thing. Absolutely. Clean slates are going to be what we want. And next we'll move on to laundering clothing. Laundry clothing. <laughs> yeah, so what I personally like to do is uh, with my colors, I like to, you know, add, well, I'm a, I'm a game person. You know, some people I know like uh, uh, Clorox, I have to put like a little bit of bleach in. Sometimes I like to do that. Um, but just make sure that you don't put too much. You kind of uh, diffuse it with a little bit of water just so it's not bleaching all of your clothes. You're not getting those those weird like the discolorations within your clothes. But I also like to use pine saw within my uh, colored clothes. Uh, and why do I do that? Well, that's because it uh, kills like 99.9% .9 of bacteria and then it gives that nice lemon fresh just pine saw scent with, within your clothes. So that gives you that nice clean slate so when you want to apply fragrances, um, you're good to go. So because when we sweat and the germs on our skin transfer to our clothing, if you're not properly disinfecting your clothes every time you launder, guess what? Those germs are not being killed in the wash and then even though it smell, may smell great when it comes out the washer, if you put it on and it starts heating up with your body and then it kind of meets with your new sweat, guess what? You can have uh, that kind of like oniony or mildewy, or, yeah, mildewy mm. fried armpit smell. No, no. <laughs> so, so I would say the best thing to do is try to get rid of most of those um, scents or, or um, or, or that kind of smell in the wash and the best way is to do, go ahead and disinfect it some way I would say for colors you can try to test uh, to make sure it doesn't affect your clothing add a little bit of pine salt for, for whites and, and bed sheets and, and, and towels you can use Clorox bleach I think that's best just to kind of decrease bacteria in your wash and guess what you're also preventing odors from, from developing when you put on these clothing or when you use these garments or, 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 or um, fabrics. Definitely Clorox bleach is definitely a must. Definitely, definitely, definitely. definitely right. can't pull or Pine Sol, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, something that disinfects. So then last we're going to talk about um, something that's very important also, which is laundering um, your bed sheets. So we talk about laundering clothing. It's very important to have clean bed sheets because think about it. Why would you get fresh and shower every single day or twice a day and then have your bed sheets uh, not laundered because when you go back on those bed sheets all that bacteria is transferring right back to your skin from old things that you know all Other bacteria that you may have left on those sheets when you didn't wash or, or, or previous it, it basically you can have a big uh, Accumulation of bacteria on your bed sheets So it's best to wash those at least once a week or have a change of bed sheets, one, bed sheets once a week and to change your pillowcase once a week so if you may notice um, if you don't change your pillowcase very often you may develop acne you may develop um, different things like that I would say the best thing is if you change it once a week then you have less problems with acne things like that of course you know we're gonna drink our water and eat healthy that helps as well but I would say from a superficial just face on surfaces just like with your phone you need to disinfect your phone you need to just you need to clean your your um, your bed sheets and your pillowcases to be clean to keep your face clear um, why why do you think it's so important to tackle those baseline things that a lot of people may overlook in order to like for the fragrances to smell better on us. Right, exactly, because what you're trying to do is you're not trying to have um, other bacteria and things on your skin, from your bed sheets, from your skin, from your clothing, interfering and creating odors that's gonna clash with your fragrance. Another thing too, fragrance isn't to cover odors. Fragrance is to enjoy, you're enjoying this fragrance for what the artist, uh, the perfumer put into the fragrance. You're not using it to cover something. So we want to exude and appreciate that fragrance. So guess what? You have to cancel out other factors that may disrupt with that fragrance. And the best way to do that is by following these hygiene tips. That's what I believe. 110% agree with Sida. You want to be clear, uh, clean, and concise with your with your own scent. And then when you apply the um, the fragrance house is scent on, I mean, you want to be clear to the person or out to the world. You know, they want. We don't wear fragrances, you know, just to only smell good, but some people want to know, okay, you want to leave an impression on people. First impressions are everything. So a person that you're meeting for the first time, they don't want to uh, meet you 
and smell a big ball of confusion. They want you to be clear, cut, and concise. And even more so, that may confuse you, right? You may, it may, think about how things affect us day to day. Um, anxiety, fears, depression. Sometimes this, these things can be, um, I would say, offset or cued by things that are just around us, our environment, which is ourselves. Maybe um, creating an imbalance in us mentally. That's what I believe. I think that um, for fragrance people, I think it's more than just about smelling good. We want to enjoy the fragrance. It takes us somewhere. It's a, it's a memory. So you kind of want to immerse yourself in that memory by, well, like I said, smelling only that fragrance and not having too many other um, scents around that are combating with that. A, a very big important thing with this, like I said, um, keeping your body clean, um, also um, cleansing your hair at least once a week, I believe. It all depends on the person. Everyone has different regimens, not to judge. Uh, obviously, I have a dry hair type, so it's not good to wash it too often, but I wash my hair at least once a week, and that helps with, you know, keeping, you know, your um, your bed sheets clean, and then also, like, not clashing with fragrances around me. But everyone, thank you for coming back to Heaven Sam Boyfriend. I hope these tips are helpful, and what I would like you to do is, if you have any helpful tips, um, please leave them in the comment section. I'd love to hear what yours are, because we're all learning from each other. We're all human. Like I said, body odor is natural. Um, you know, I would say if you have any kind of concerns and there's not things that can be resolved by washing or anything like that, you should definitely see a doctor. We're not doctors. We're just suggesting that in general, um, certain hygiene tips that we use from day to day to smell fresh and clean and, um, you know, don't overdo it. We're just, we're just talking about like, you're not trying to get rid of how you naturally smell altogether. You're just trying to decrease, uh, you know, maybe odors that you don't want to smell like and so that it can blend nicely with fragrances that you do want to smell like, if that makes sense. That makes sense to me. Well, guys, thank you for joining us again for another evening at Heaven Seven Boyfriend. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. You're finding value in our content. So, until next time, guys, we'll see you. Bye. Bye.